share recipes where herbs are the star ingredients is this star, Suzanne and Sadie. Uh, thank you, Sadie. Uh, this is going to be so good. You're making uh, what first? Well, first of all, we're going to talk about herbs. It's spring. Mm. Everything is in season right now. The, the lovely things and herbs. The first one on the list that comes to mind is something called za'atar. Everybody knows what za'atar is? No. It is not a spice. So I'm dispelling that it's a herb. Okay. It's in the family of oregano and thyme. Mm -hmm. We grow it, we dry it, we can we add to it something called sumac, which is mm. a, uh, a tart berry, and sesame seeds and salt. And this is the result of it. This is za'atar. You can use it on chicken, on fish, but mm, today I'm going to show it to you by making a crisp. So I'm going to take Arabic bread like this that I have separated, and I basically, with a pizza cutter, just cut randomly, squiggly, straight, it doesn't matter, okay, and just lay them on a tray, uh -huh. okay, like this, and you can certainly uh, involve your children or men. <laughs> you know, to be involved. I mean, you know, no offense, men. There's yeah. no men in the room, is there? Yes, there is. There's, There's a, couple a couple behind me and they're looking at you. You fine. know, it's something that they can do. <laughs> they're able to do. I'm with you. Because <laughs> it's there. easy. It's straightforward, yeah, right, right. you know? Yeah. A little bit of olive oil. And, of course, you get the best olive oil that you can you can afford. Yes. Which is extra virgin. And mm -hmm. uh, we call it in Arabic, zayt, which is oil. Mm -hmm. Zaytun, which is olive. Those are the two words that mean olive oil, and it's it's a, a staple. Now, I take my za'atar, and then I'm going to sprinkle it as much or little as I want. And, of course, it's going to stick mm -hmm. to the olive oil, and then the oven is pre-baked to 350 degrees. If you want to add in a little bit of cayenne pepper, just to give it a little kick, you can. And then you put it in the oven and let it bake for... 10 minutes. Okay. At most. Okay. So right. in it goes to the oven. While that's baking, I'm going to move to the next. I think it's time for one. me to switch sides. What's, yes. what's the temp again on that? On the, on the, on the, uh, 350 degrees. 330. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Watch it like a hawk. Don't go on your phone or do anything yeah. silly like yeah. that. Right. Okay. And, uh, uh, just when it's nice and crisp, it'll be ready. Okay. And the smell will fill the air. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. What's the second recipe? This is tabbouleh. Who has not heard of tabbouleh? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows tabbouleh, right? But the one that you see in the supermarket is an imposter. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Tabbouleh is the diva salad of the Arab world, and I'll tell you why it's a diva, okay? It's a little bit high maintenance. First of all, there's rules. Your parsley, the stalks have been removed, you chop it. I'm going to show you how I chop my parsley. No food processor is allowed. Okay. Okay, so don't start thinking about a food processor. You roll it up into a ball, and you're basically chiffonading or you're actually shredding yeah. the parsley so that you can, I'm not going to go all the way, but right. I just want to show you the idea here. Right. You see? Yes. That's what we're after. Okay. We don't want mush. Okay. So it's already done here. Now, what's in tabbouli? Definitely no coriander. Thank you. Okay, so no coriander. I always liked your tabbouli. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I have spring onions that I'm going to add a little bit of dry mint. Okay. I have layers cinnamon. Layers, huh? Cinnamon. Cinnamon. I know it sounds bizarre, but cinnamon is that je ne sais quoi that, that's in the back that nobody quite knows what it is. But it's that little background flavor that's okay. in there. It's beautiful. Some shallots as well go in there. And I'm just going to mix them with my very clean finger. So the, the shallots, even though that's the same family as the onion, is just a little sweeter? It's, it's a different crunch. Crunch, so okay. So you got textures. Okay. Uh, a perfect tabbouli is all about different textures. It's not soggy. It's not wet. It's light and crisp. It's mm -hmm. just like spring. Mm -hmm. That's what tabbouli is. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people try to introduce this diva salad to something called quinoa. <laughs> But Tabuti's never heard of a quinoa and doesn't want to know quinoa. <laughs> no. Okay. How did that happen? No. Okay. Like she's not interested. Okay. 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 You know what I mean? Okay, that's you know funny. quinoa no, no. Tomatoes that have been diced fine. Yes. And underneath, instead of quinoa, we have something called burgul in Arabic, which is a cracked wheat. Pre-cooked, dried, and cracked. 
No quinoa allowed, okay. only burgul. And the reason why I put it on top, the tomatoes on top, is I allow it to soak up the juices of the tomato because water is your worst worst ingredient in any salad and of course a tabbouleh. Uh, not quinoa because I'm not no doing quinoa. that. No, 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 no. She doesn't know tabbouleh. Uh, quinoa. Oh, so, no, where do I find that? You can find it at Blah Blahs yeah. at any supermarket right, right. and, you know, any Arab food store will have it as well. And okay. try to get the fine one, not the, the coarse one, okay? okay? Yeah. And you just rinse it. Now, you, you fluff up your tabbouleh yes. very quickly, and yeah. the tabbouleh should be predominantly parsley because it's a parsley salad. Right. Okay? So I always say to people, if you don't like parsley, you ain't going to like tabbouleh. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is fresh mint, another beautiful oh, herb great combo. that is essential to this oh. salad. If you leave it out, you'll know. Now, every good diva likes perfume, right? Yes. So this is the scent of the, the lemon that's uh, on here that I put in. Yes. And then lemon juice, only fresh, none of that stuff that comes in a bottle, you know, that pretends to be lemon and calls itself real lemon. We're only after the real feel. And then, of course, the best olive oil that you can yeah. afford, oh, yeah. extra virgin goes on. Now, the so thing about tabbouleh and mm -hmm. why it is a diva as well is that the day I'm adding pomegranates as well because every diva needs a little accessory, right? Right. Okay. It looks so, so pretty. These yeah. are her rubies, all yes. right, that go in there. Now that is not traditional. This is just me, Suzanne, fooling yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. And it gives it that nice little crunch That's of sweet really and sour. Pretty. So yeah. it's a beautiful salad. Mm -hmm. And of course, salt. Of course, mm -hmm. you have to put salt and and black pepper. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, how am I going to serve my tabbouleh? How are you going to do it? Well, first of all, my people. Yes. You want to make a tabbouleh? Have everything ready in advance, okay. mise en place. On the day you want to serve it, literally the second it has to come out, because always, tabbouleh is fashionably late. Okay. Always. Okay. Always, always, always. Okay. Okay. Here I have endives that I've opened up, just like that, into mm -hmm. petals, and I will scoop my tabbouleh and just mound it here. That's great. And it just turns into this beautiful flower, okay? Celebrating spring. Oh, yeah. It looks like spring. Just like that. Beautiful. And smells then, fresh, too. Yes. And yep. then I take my tomatoes, because, you know, things have to look beautiful yeah, as well on right. top. And then I just have some nice pea shoots here mm -hmm. that I'm going to put on top just to give it some height. Okay. All right? So that's my tabbouleh. You grab a petal and you eat it. And you have to know that tabbouleh has to be served the minute... It's mixed. When it's ready. When okay? it's ready. Because like all good divas, tabbouleh waits for no one. Okay. <laughs> Suzanne? <laughs> Suzanne? Oh, let's talk about this one. And then... Yes. There's your chips. Here are our chips that are ready. Okay, yes. so they're nice and crunchy. Right. And I've put them here in a jar. That's a good idea. Vertically yeah, like or that. whatever. I have some hummus here as a what, dip. What did you say about hummus to me many, many shows ago? If it doesn't have chickpeas in it, you can't call it hummus. You can't. Because chickpeas should be the, the number ingredient. one thing in the ingredient as you're reading the ingredients, exactly, right? Because exactly, because in Arabic, hummus means chickpeas. Yeah, yeah. You can't. It can't be the ingredient number eight. No, no. and it can't be butternut squash either. Okay. I call it hummus. <laughs> I'm watching you. You can't do that. There's rules. Okay. There's rules. Well, very good. And that's it. And in, traditionally, these are grape leaves that yes. are in season right now, fresh grape leaves. You could also use this as okay. uh, like a wrap to okay. wrap okay. and eat, and it's nice and crunchy. What else do you bring? And then these... I wanted you to try, Marilyn, if you like. These are green almonds that are in season right now. This is I what the almond almonds. looks like. I can't have almonds. Oh, you can't but, have but almonds. That's okay. Maybe we can share with the audience yeah. later. You can that's actually eat it all. Like. Oh, yeah, look, listen. I didn't know that. That's an almond. Look what we learned today. Crunch, crunch. Two fresh sides, perfect for spring. Thank you, Suzanne. Great story. Okay. The rest of these are on Marilyn.ca. And to help you grow your own herbs, thanks to old Canada Seeds, you're all getting a bundle of herb and vegetable seeds. Wow. All yours to take Thank you, Suzanne. Nice to see you. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. We'll be right back.